Welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about using linear relationships in order to predict values. Okay, so let's say you have a situation. Um, the graph below shows the cost for taxi rides of different distances. Predict the cost of a taxi ride um, that covers, whoops, that should be an O, that covers uh, six and a half miles. Okay, first we want to find the equation of the line. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. It is a little... The y-intercept is a little bit tricky because it's hard to see. So these are going up by 2 every time. So that's 2 and 6 here. Um, it's a little hard to see what the y-intercept is. So let's see if we can find the slope in a point in order to uh, figure it out. Um, so this looks like to be the point 4. And let's see, if this is 10, then that's 11. So this is 4, 11. Okay, and this looks like it's halfway up. So this is going to be 8. And um, this is 18, so that's going to be 19. Okay, so for eight miles, it's going to be $19. It's pretty cheap according to New York City standards. Um, and for four miles, it's going to be $11. Okay, um, so in order to find the slope, we can find uh, we can use the uh, slope formula. M is equal to y2 minus y1 x over x2 minus x1. Okay, so we have 19 minus 11 over uh, 19 minus 11 over 8 minus 4. Again, it's really easy to find the slope if you line them up, align them vertically so that the x's are, uh, the y's are over the y's and the x's are over the x's. Okay, um, this would be 8 over uh, 4, which is 2. So it looks like it's about $2 or exactly $2 per mile is the slope here. Um, now the y-intercept, let's see. Let's see if we can figure it out from a coordinate. So if we have 411, we can take the y value of the coordinate, which is 11. Um, we can take the $2 per mile and uh, put the 4 in, plus b. Okay, so we have 11 is equal to 8 plus b. So b must be equal, if we subtract 8 from both sides, we'd have b is equal to 3. Okay, and so that looks about right because um, it looks like it's halfway between the 2 mark and the 4 mark, so b is equal to 3. That's pretty consistent with what the graph shows us, right? Um, so our equation is y is equal to $2 per mile plus an initial fee of $3, okay? That's like if you go into a taxi, even in New York City, um, when you sit down into the taxi, they, there's already a charge on the, um, the, the ticker because it's, they, they have an initial cost and then they have a per mile cost, all right? So now we're going to use this to predict a value. Now there's a couple different ways I could do this. I could actually look at the graph and use the graph to predict this value. Okay, This is not the most um, helpful graph to do this because it's already going up by 2. So here would be 6. Um, half between 6 and 8 would be 7. So 6 and half would be sort of halfway between these two marks. So it's a little bit hard to see it. I can kind of estimate the value to be... So if I just drew this dashed line here, this point right here on the line would have an x-coordinate that's around $6.50. Oh no, this, these are miles, so it'd just be six and a half miles, right? Um, 6.5 miles, and it looks to be about $16. So I, if I'm just estimating, I could use the graph to estimate, but it's not the best thing to do because, it, look at this graph, it's a little hard to get information from it. So let's just go ahead and use the equation and put um, the x value of 6.5 in here. So we'd wonder what the cost was when we multiply 6.5 by 2 and add 3. So 6.5 times 2 is 6 times 2 plus half of 2. So 6 times 2 is 12 plus half of 2 is 1. So that's 13. So you have 13 plus 3 to y. So y must be 16, which is really what we saw from the graph. So that's good. Um, so the total cost is $16 for three uh, for 6.5 miles rather. Okay. Uh, step three, answer in a full sentence. So that's just to remind you that if you have a word problem, you answer in a full sentence. So here you're writing down the full sentence, okay? Um, it would cost $16 for 6.5 miles. Okay, let's try another one. All right, Pauline's income from a job that pays her a fixed amount per hour is shown on the graph. Use the graph to find the predicted values. Okay, um, so 
we want to find the income earned for two hours and the income earned for 3.25 hours. All right, so here we used an equation to find the predicted value. Here, let's go ahead and use the graph because it's, um, this one's fairly easy. Well, at least at two, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, so income earned for two hours. So for two hours here, we can just draw this line up here and use this and then figure out the Y value. So this would be $30. So it would be $30 for two hours, okay? And 3.25, see that's going to be a little bit harder. So this is three, three and a quarter would be, this is about three and a half, so three and a quarter would be about here. So it looks to be $50, okay? Again, we could make an equation with this information. It's also a proportional relationship because it goes to the origin. So it actually would be very easy to make a, um, an equation because, so let me just answer this question for a second. It looks to be about $50. If I made an equation, it would be of the form y is equal to mx because your b is already zero. So here I can actually do this really quickly. Let's just try it. This would be 90 bucks, right? So for six hours, she makes $90. So let's take six, uh, $90 divided by six. Right, that would be, um, let's see, six goes into 90. That's once, six, three, carry the zero down, that would be 15. So that would be $15 per one hour. So your equation is y is equal to 15x. Then I can put the 3.25 in here, right? So uh, y is equal to 3.25x, and then you're gonna get out 50, okay? So that's another way of answering it in a more precise way, all right. Let's, there's a follow-up question here. The total income earned for working five eight-hour days at the standard rate. So she's working like Monday through Friday and eight hours a day. So in order to do that, let's do if it's five days times eight hours per day, that's going to be a total of 40 hours. Okay. So um, if we use the equation, I could try to figure out what 40, you know, what 40 hours, what, how much she would make in 40 hours, but except it doesn't go that far. I could figure out how much she makes in uh, eight hours, but again, our line doesn't really help us that much. So it's a good thing that I calculated the equation because um, this way, it's a lot easier for me to figure this out. So we go y is equal to 15 times 40. Um, so we just take, let's do, 15 times 4 is going to be 60. So 15 times 40 is going to get you 600. Okay? So she earns, does she have a name? Let's see. Pa uh, Pauline. So Pauline earns uh, $600 for, oops, 40 hours of work. And that is a perfect answer to this question, right? You answer in a full sentence. If you have a word problem, you always answer in a full sentence. And that is the end of the lesson for today. So really what we were doing today is using either a graph or a table or a combination of both um, to find, uh, to either find the equation or use the graph to predict values. We're just predicting values today, okay? Um, so that's, that's generally why we make equations is in order to, um, find ways of answering various questions. So for instance, if we're trying to figure out how much, um, what the, price, the projected price of um, new home values would be in the next year, we may, we may make an equation based on that and then run some numbers through it if you're trying to figure out like the price for a specific home, how much it would, it would increase for the next year. So those are like big equations that economists uh, use to figure out what our economy is going to be like you know, for past years and, and future years. Um, so, you know, equations end up actually being super important to us um, as a way of predicting uh, future outcomes. All right. So that's it. That's the end of the lesson for today. Thanks for sticking around.